I'm here with Her Excellency Minister Rebecca Okwachi, the Minister for Telecommunications and Postal Services from South Sudan. South Sudan is the newest member of the International Telecommunications Union, having joined in 2011. So their participation here in Busan at her plenipotentiary conference 2014 is a truly historic moment, given that it is their first official participation at an ITU conference and their first time to vote at an ITU conference. Minister Okwachi, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. We we heard in your policy statement that you've so eloquently delivered to the plenary hall uh, about your national rollout of broadband. Can you please tell us about how you're progressing on the ground and what are your hopes for the future? Thank you very much for this and uh, we are so glad to be part of this uh, conference, uh, PP14. Yes, uh, broadband of course uh, we know in the ICT sector is, uh, is a very, very important issue at the moment. Uh, South Sudan, as you know, had uh, no real infrastructure, especially in terms of uh, broadband. So uh, now that we are moving together with the entire world, it has become very important for us to focus on having uh, broadband that will help us also to connect very well. We are working very hard on uh, some strategies. Uh, we have a very big committee that's working very hard to have our strategies very clear. But at the same time, we are also looking at the fiber optic, uh, which is now, you know, in the ICT world is uh, quick. Uh, you can connect very easily. It can help you also with the content and helps you with the internet. So uh, we have uh, planned very well. And uh, we now want to be connected uh, through the eastern part of Africa, that is through Kenya, through Uganda. And also, there is a link also that is possible uh, to the north, to Sudan. Uh, so uh, we now have um, signed an MOU with the Ministry of Transport where we uh, uh, have started to, with the, the planning on uh, connecting from Juba, the capital city, uh, to Nadapal, that is on the border with Kenya. And uh, our planning also to go through Nimule, one of uh, our towns uh, where there is a highway to Uganda in the south, it's also progressing. And we have thought very clearly about how to go towards the north because there is also a link over there. So um, we are expeditiously following up that and we have given a promise to the people of South Sudan that uh, by next year, we must be somewhere ahead to realize that goal. So uh, for us, this is a very big leap and uh, we hope and we pray and we will work very hard practically to ensure that we are connected uh, with the other countries. And also looking at the fact that we are a landlocked country. We don't want to be landlocked when we are connected by uh, the fiber optic. So this is something which is advanced and we will uh, see the realization very soon. It sounds like an incredible amount of progress and congratulations on that in Thank such a you. short space of time. What steps are being taken in terms of affordable access, particularly for people in remote and rural areas, which of course is a significant uh, issue in, in South Sudan? Yeah, one very important uh, fact that we need to know is that uh, given a, again the condition of South Sudan, uh, most of our areas are rural. And uh, now in terms of uh, accessibility with regards to mobile, uh, we have four operators there and uh, we, we access a reasonable uh, part of, of the country, but it's still uh, we feel the rural access is still very remote. Uh, but again, as I said, we are set on it and uh, we, as we, we do the connections now in the broadband, we want to make sure that we reach there. But also with regards to, to the mobile accessibility, I think the penetration is not bad. Uh, we are also planning with the, our new regulator now. We told him we are not going to rest on the chair. We are going to run. Uh, with this also we are aiming at uh, having our universal access uh, fund. Uh, we want to move very quick on it and that will help us to get some funds which is reasonably okay to allow us to um, have the rural uh, areas accessed. We have also some uh, internet uh, connections, which is not very bad. Uh, we have about seven uh, internet uh, providers. Three of them are very active, and they have also reached to some, some good areas of South Sudan. But then again, as I say, the rural access is very important, and this is the next stage that we'll concentrate on much more 
when uh, the regulatory body is now in motion. With such development of the market and with so many projects underway, you will need a strong regulatory framework. What steps are being taken in that direction? This has actually been my good news to the PP14. Uh, I met uh, with many of my colleagues in Abuja uh, a year ago, just two months I was in office. And when I asked them, you know, what, what do you advise me? Uh, they told me, look, have a regulatory body in place and have a good regulatory body and start with very good foundation. This is a message I took from many of my colleagues attending this conference. And uh, in one year, uh, we are back to inform everybody that now we have established our regulatory body. I really want to take this opportunity to thank the ITU and uh, much more uh, the outgoing uh, Secretary General with his team. All of them supported us by giving us some experts to help me uh, select uh, the Director General for uh, the regulatory body, the National Communications Authority of South Sudan. And in a very short period of time, we had a very good panel that worked transparently to ensure that there is good selection. I had very good three of them, and out of them we selected one. Now that person is in office, and he's also with us here, is Dr. Lado Wani. And uh, now we are in motion. Uh, I told him also, you will not rest, there is a lot to be done, including some of the items you have uh, mentioned. So for us, this is uh, good news, it is a leap uh, within one year, and uh, he's, he's, he's already there. So I think in a short period of time, we'll see now there are a lot of issues the, the regulator has to, to fix. Uh, but then it will actually make life easier for us because as a ministry, we have been acting as a regulator. And we're combining the regulatory work plus policy work. It has not been easy. Now that will divide the job, I believe we'll move very quickly. And uh, the regulatory body is autonomous. We made sure it is autonomous, but we must cooperate and work in harmony for the sake of delivering services to the people of South Sudan who badly need it at the moment. And with regards to the people and the users themselves, we learned from your policy statement that you've also in parallel put in place a computer literacy program. It'd be very interesting to hear more about that. Yes, that, that one for us, uh, we are saying that we are not working for the sake of telling people we are achievers, but we must see the impact on the ground. And uh, when I came to the ministry, I found there was already a beginning of an institute for computer training. And that institute is now also one of our big focus because you need the capacity building, you need the training, you need the education. And you cannot talk about ICT in its bigger picture without having the public involved, and much more the women. I always say, look, people will tell me, you are not talking about gender at the moment, minister, you are very senior, but I'm still also biased towards women because they are more than half of the society. Therefore, literacy, uh, computer literacy for women is very important. And also our children are very important. They are the future leaders of today and of tomorrow. So that institute for us is one of the institutions that I'm going to empower so that they can uh, contribute as a government institution into the computer literacy. I have already done, doing, I'm already doing a lot of advocacy with the women. There is no one forum I have gone to. Whether if people are going to eat or they are going to dance, I must give a message that they must become computer literate at the beginning but then also they pick up the use of computer to benefit from the programs in computers. The same thing with the children. Now we have experiences from other countries around us, like Rwanda and Uganda, they have already introduced the uh, uh, computer programs for children in school. It's another step, we'll move into it, but I think as a basic, I feel it's very important that this uh, sector of the society is empowered. So by giving them that chance, they will benefit us in future, plus also the civil servants. Computer literacy is very important for the civil servants. So the institute we have in the Ministry of Telecommunications and Postal Service provides an opportunity for civil servants and then eventually women and children uh, for them to be empowered in computer literacy. And the same goes to the civil servants outside there and everybody. Even our elders who, who said, some of them say they are born before computers, they are literally called 
BBC, born before computers. But we tell them it's not too late. You can also still learn. If you want to use the internet, you want to save uh, data, you want to uh, send emails, you need to be literate. So this is an area I'm focusing on and I want to see the people of South Sudan in a short period of time, picking it up so that we can roll together in the sector of ICT. Minister, thank you very much for sharing this very exciting story with us today. I'm sure we'll be tuning in regularly over the next years to update on, on all the progress that's happening in South Sudan. So Minister Rebecca Okwachi, Minister of Telecommunications, South Sudan, thank you very much. Thank you very much and please keep on tracking us so that we live true to our expectations and the promises we do to our people for the development of South Sudan. Thank you.